Hi everyone, Demon here. How's I hope everyone's doing well, fabulous, and so on and so forth. I need to fix a thing because I'm a dumbass and need to fix it. Uh, because we didn't do a thing last time. Why didn't you fix the thing before you fix the thing? Because fuck off. There we go. Oh, that was it? Yeah, that was it. Because I couldn't fix it while I was live. I had to fix it while we I had to fix it when we got up to the screen. Hi everyone! But I am Team KX. Is it that no, loud? I am so, uh, today we're reviewing Yakuza Like a Dragon, as you can see in the very top left. Uh, how's this? Oh shit, I'm here for the wrong review, then my bad, I gotta go. <laughs> what were you thinking, Infinite Well? <laughs> uh, I mean, if we could do our thoughts so far on it, but even then, like, I don't think we even have enough to even. No, I don't about, think. But... I don't think we have enough, because I don't know. I think it was, like, what? Again, 15 chapters in number two? Well, I think they even estimate it's going to be about, like, 60 hours long. Because it's meant to, I think, because this was, like, 40, I think, altogether, if he's doing the story. But the okay. end of the wall is meant to be 60. But that's also if you don't get distracted by the side stuff or the don't. Oh, you haven't well, even gotten to that part. I can't even go into that with you. Uh, we didn't really uh, plan anything except for, like, Cal did. Cal's like, I need to have, like, pros and cons sheets. Okay, like... It's all because of a TV show that I saw where the guy, when he's trying to make a decision on anything, he always goes to his yellow legal pad, mm -hmm. and that's how he makes his decisions. And it sounds so dumb, but like that's kind of what I did because I wanted to have bullet points of what I wanted to talk about, but also I don't want to forget some things. But uh, but I will say this game deserves a solid eight out of ten in my opinion for the first time. For the first time I played it, at least. Uh, Cal, you've played this game twice now, haven't you? One with basic version, and the other version with uh. Like the with mod. the brawler mod, that's right. Yeah, I played it. Yeah, I played it like originally back in twenty twenty two, then finished it really this year, not even yeah. a few months ago. So a little after, a little before I finished it. Yeah, I think that's, like I, I, I think I think you did in February. It. Yeah. Well, I finished it. I think last month or the month before. Yeah, you, I think like a stream or two left. Uh, all you had left to do it because you were near the very end when by the time I finished it. Yeah. Yeah, it's, which is lame. So. Uh, cause of this, uh, the, what, what, what did you like of the game? Honestly. So we kind of already talked about it a couple times already, but it's still the, the truth. Um, yep. they did a really good job of this being the very first JRPG oh. considering like, I mean, it wasn't bad. Like no. I, I, definitely, there was definitely room for improvement, oh, yeah. but at the same time, like this really wasn't a bad game for them to get started with. No, um, I completely agree with you on that. Uh, main like, thing for me was the mana system. Oh yeah, which I do agree. Um, also, it, also the cons with it is I did not like how grindy this game was because that's Jesus. That's every JRPG though, yeah, if you really like, think about it. But I, I agree with you. I think like the me and you grind in two different ways. Oh yeah, because like you went purely for Shogun, I went purely for the um the not the uh, the one training area where you can go through all those um. The, yeah, you, you the went characters. you went through the arena. Bro, I beat that, like, three different times. My That's point. how, like, much grinding I did with Like, that. you went through the arena, you did the underground and beat the fucking vacuum cleaner motherfucker. Fucking god. I I will say, fighting that vacuum cleaner was a pain in the ass. Oh, I remember. It was not a fun time because that thing was broken how strong it was. Because well, I didn't know what I was going to walk into it the first time. I just saw it. I'm like, oh. Oh. Yeah, Fuck. basically. I, I soft locked my own game. Like, I had to go back and, like, okay, can we get lucky and cheese this thing? So what's funny is when I played it, I instantly learned its gimmick of um, attack the sides, then attack the main thing. Yeah. Because that, that was a weird gimmick, in my opinion, with the, how that enemy was. And yeah. that same gimmick, in my opinion, shows up in the final boss of the game. His bodyguards have him completely protected. Yeah, can't hit him while he's got that kind of meat shield. We just have to do this the old-fashioned way. and pick him off okay. one by one. Oh, but you can talk about spoilers, right? Yeah, we we'll spoil spoil heads up, everyone. We're, we're gonna spoil the fucking game. Was that with Tendo specifically? Because that was the last thing I had as a group, or was it with um, uh, Arakawa? Uh, I think it's our. Uh, I think it's when he's Tendo. No, okay. no, it's when he. It's when the final final boss shows up. Not not the fucking damage sponge. Wait, the Amon clan? Did you fight them? No, um. Do you even know who they are, actually? No, not off the top of my head. Okay. No, what I'm talking about is, uh, the brother. Oh, yeah, Arakawa, yeah. Arakawa. 
I forgot his name because I hated him so much. Well, the problem I have with uh, I have with Yakuza games is the characters' names because I can't remember. I remember their faces really well, but oh, I yeah. have to, like make a character sheet every time because yeah, um, I forget who they are, their names. Next to actual Awakawa, Awakawa's son. If you look right next to the left of Ichiban, before he yeah. gets fuckified. Good way to describe what happened to him, but yeah. Yeah, because in my opinion, I liked his old style new, more than his new, than his civilian style. Well, his civilian style looked more like what she's like an American would look like, honestly. Yeah, exactly. Japanese, man. That's like that, because I, I recognize that right away. But... And I was not the biggest fan of that, honestly. Interesting. But that go well, we're going into further into yeah. the game. So let's start with the intro. Like, yeah. let's go with the bat. That bat saved you throughout the entire fucking game. Bruh. That's one of the points I made with the pros or the cons. It's like, I like all the jobs, but mm -hmm. Hero was just clearly broken. It, it, like, you could just tell right off the bat. Honestly, the only ability, I think the reason why Hero was broken or so good is because of a handful of abilities. One being like the Mega Swing, where you can just yeah. hit everyone. Oh yeah, no, the Giga Swing, because that was like, you could, that was the, the better version. That, like that, um... All the heals you had for oh, yourself, because yeah. you could heal your team or yourself, and oh, and, oh and you have like a backup revive if you really yeah, needed it. Peerless resolve that was just mm -hmm. stupidly broken. It's like I, that's how you survive every fight. Because once you realize, like, oh, I can use this in any one shot, I'm gonna win every fight. What's that's weird though, I figured you noticed in my playthrough, I barely used that ability because you didn't need to because I... you were mad lad who grinded for eighty some hours. I bet all the exaggeration, but still, you grinded a fuck ton. So yeah, you could beat everybody and stomp them. And just be like, oh look, and look, an attack booster, and look, more attack boosters, and look, I have nine hundred ninety nine attack. Well, considering when you went, you had to stop yourself uh, when you're going against Majima and Kido. Mm -hmm. You're like, okay, I'm gonna come back even stronger, and you came back and stomped on them. Which oh yeah, I do have to love the fact that even when you were that strong, they still were even oh fucking or Christ, like. Like, I've seen people online, like, on YouTube, when they're doing, like, on level 99 on Legend, mm -hmm. and they're just eating their attacks. I'm like, oh, yeah. there's no fucking way that can happen in normal. And then I see him play, and I'm like, oh, they will just eat your attacks like that. Like, yep. okay, I'm fine. Um, I also, uh, but, so yeah, the hero job, back onto that, in, in my opinion, if they rebalance that, and I hope they did an infinite wealth. I, I really hope they rebalanced it in infinite wealth. Where Hilo isn't just the best of the best. Yeah. Um, the class system in general, though, I was not impressed. And my main reason, and they fix it, they kind of fix this in Infinite Wealth, and I, I want to kind of pop back and forth between this game and Infinite Wealth because we kind of have some opinion of it. Not enough to make a review of it, but enough yeah. to kind of make comparisons. Yeah is you need to be specific jobs just to get MP back. Or yeah, you need like, specific skills. Or you need items specifically to get your MP back. Like, Nanbo is really good about that. With some oh, yeah. of his items, or Psycho is really good. But, like, Adachi or Ichiban, good mm. luck. You had to carry MP items for days. Oh, yeah, you had to carry them for days. Or you had to do what I fucking did and just have, like, infinite mana. Yeah, because then you just never run out either. Yeah. But something I also noticed in game, this might have just been me, is early game, you are desperate for mana. While in late game, it's huh. nothing. Yeah, like you'll have enough to use your all your strong attacks and then still have a fuck ton left over. So that that's just me in my opinion, and I'm happy you agree with me on that. It's just oh, like, yeah. they really need to rebalance that system. And, my, and maybe this might just be me and why I like games the way I do it. I'm a big fan of spell slots. Compared to spells off the cooldowns, compared to just one mana pool. You know what I mean by that? Yeah, I think I do. Like, let's go with um, I think it's a Dachi. Is it a Dachi? The homeless man. Nanba. Nanba. Let's go with Nanba real quick. Nanba was your full-on spellcaster and healer. Yeah. Besides your her. Yeah, I mean, they. I always let the two of them as support because she was yeah. good for healing and he was good for uh, buffing you guys and also healing. <laughs> healing, debuffs, that's what Nama did. That she was, was basically your magic character, essentially. Something I would have liked, and this is this is just me and Ben in general, is I would have liked to see, like, you can only cast this amount, this amount of times in a battle. 
Oh, okay. I would have loved to have seen that style. Or, uh, like, the Giga Swing, where I spam that sucker every yeah. second of every time. Instead, have it be like, okay, you can't use this for, like, two turns after you've used it. Yeah. Like I would have loved that. that. Yeah. But no, instead, they built it like, okay, cool, you have this very limited mana bar. My, I'm a big fan of cooldowns and spell slots. That's a me thing. That well, is... That's a th I that's a good point, considering, like, you could easily just spam the same move, because if you yeah. had enough MP, you could just spam it, like... Um, speaking of combat, since we're in the combat section right now, selecting your party when you're trying to heal them or use an Annoying. item. It Annoying. was downright stupid. You know that, you know that menu that shows up when you're switching party members? Yeah. Use that! That would have made more sense. It would It would have made so much well, easier. Like, this is where I made the comparison to other JRPGs like Persona 5, because I've been playing that on the side as well, and yeah. how it's so much easier just to do things like that specifically, mm -hmm. like heal somebody or swap them out, like, because they, I mean, it's funny, because like, Sega, I'm pretty sure, owns Atlas. Yeah, they Atlas do. Made that. Okay, so I was, so yeah. Sega like, owns I think Persona. It's funny. Yeah. Yeah. So, what's, I think it's based off two different companies, that one yeah. made Yakuza and another made Persona. Yeah. So, what's funny is they're owned by the same company. Yeah. It's just made by different branches, which is still interesting in my opinion, that one made an okay-ish, I'm saying Persona, made an okay -ish battle system, while in Yakuza, it feels like they're struggling. That's just me. Yeah. Uh, Story-wise, 50-50, personally. Like, there are things I really enjoy, because, like, on my end, like, seeing all the Yakuza characters come back, and, like, seeing them... Like, how they're, like, this is my gripe. It's like, I don't like the way some legacy characters are treated, like mm -hmm. Star Wars. Because I absolutely do not like the sequel trilogy. And I don't oh. like the way they treat the characters. And, like, I I have a problem with everyone I'm going to compare to them. Because there's really no reason why the three of them couldn't be reunited in one scene. The three, uh, Carrie Fisher, Mark Hamill, and Harrison Ford. Versus here, they don't treat them like throwaway characters. They treat no. them, like, they show, like, Majima. When you yeah. meet him later... He is a fucking beast, and you had no idea what you're walking into, I bet, when you saw him, besides no. this guy's gonna be tough. I, I, like, when I first met the legacy characters, whose names escaped me, because I remember Majima, their faces. Majima, Sajima, and Kiru. Yeah, when I fought them, I think it was Kiru I was having trouble with the most. Uh, that The dragon of, uh, dragon of Dojima. Dragon of Dojima, yeah. yeah. He was the one I was having the most trouble with. Well, like, I like that because I oh, want, yeah. I don't, if I beat them in one hit or I beat them really easily. There's a problem. Pissed. And even then, like, I kind of, this is one of my favorite things about those fights at the very end. You guys are all out of breath, huffing and puffing, barely there. And then Majima they're like, just hey. smiling, having fun. And he's <laughs> like, oh, I wasn't even going that hard. I'm like, I remember that when I first heard that, I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, I did all that just for you to be like, oh, this is a Tuesday for me. I'm like, no, yeah. no, <laughs> no, no. I was so pissed. All that grinding was just for like, yeah. This is no big deal for me. I also just forgot to mention something at the beginning of the stream. I know nothing of the Yakuza series. Oh, yeah. I know That's nothing. One of the things I like that you went into this with no knowledge, because this was yeah. great for me, but you also kind of figured out who was important and who was... Um, yeah, exactly. Or all like, the, like, you didn't know, but also you kind of... Like, I kind of like, triggered it. Like, yeah. my brain was like, oh. Like, like th these guys are important. These guys I have to worry about. Like, I think of the scene in... When you're inside uh, the Tojo clan headquarters, and yeah. there's the big fight going on, and mm. Kiryu comes out and punches uh, the guy, and that's oh, when yeah. him. I went fucking nuts the first time, because I was I knew it was coming, because mm. I already got spoiled online, but still. Like, that must have felt, like, kind of cool to you, because, like, you're like, oh, I wonder who this guy is, and why he's so When crying. I first saw him, I'm like, he's gonna kick my ass. He's gonna <laughs> kick my ass! That, that immediately popped in my head. And I, but the entire game, I enjoyed yeah. There, there, like I said, there's a couple moments that I'm still like, Neh. and I'm glad we agree about Nanba because like I still like even two playthroughs. I'm like I don't like the way he treats no, Ichiban, not... and like I don't like that he. You're like, oh, it's fine, you're my bro, and I'm like, no, I no, I, I want to punch you with the two by four. <laughs> like the fact that you basically only kept me around for your own brother, and like I get it because I mean I don't have siblings, so mm -hmm. I don't understand that. But at the same time, like you basically just used me, and it's like, oh, oh yeah. it's fine, don't worry about it. Or it's just situation for those who don't know Namba based Namba's brother 
was a reporter, if I remember correctly. Yeah. And was trying the gold, the gold medal, I think. At the, yeah, the Korean the, mafia. The Tommy Jewel or whatever. I, I think Korean it's the Korean mafia. Yeah, Korean mafia. Uh, so the Spider Web Gang. <laughs> That's better, actually. That's Spiderweb Gang. That's really what they were. I knew that's what that's they called themselves. I mean, they were. I, that was I believe that's what it translated to was Spiderweb. That or like something along those lines. So, the Spiderweb Gang was counterfeiting money. Namba's brother was kind of like, "Hey, hey, that's a story, right there. I'm gonna go investigate." God disappears. Basically, he went missing. Namba, who was fired from his job, went, Hey, bro, where you the fuck at? No response. Hunts him down, finds that he's here. Stays in town as a homeless bum. No one thinks anything. Kobe Jewel's already on his ass. Immediately, because he gets spotted like it's nobody's fucking business. It's pretty accurate, play by play. So, then he goes to us, who has this fake counterfeit bill. And he's like, oh, my brother could be connected to this shit. Oh, my brother is connected to this shit, isn't he? It's also a little too convenient, honestly, because the fact that he happened to find him and, like, that was the one thing he really needed, to, like, as proof that, like, yeah, that could have still been a lot. So, like, that, uh, I mean, that's also a lot of the Yakuza games. Like, oh, yeah, it, it, that's just a little too convenient that what, it happened. I mean, I get it, plus to happen, but. And what on. drives me fucking nuts, by the way, is how we got that in our pocket in the first place. And. Uh... Would you like to explain what happened? Because fucking so, hell. I, again, one of the things I love about Ichiban but also hate is like, he was going in to go, he f goes through the entire headquarters, beats yep. up Sawashira, which is still satisfying, and he tries to go back to his old patriarch to say, hey, buddy, I missed you. Let's, come on, dad, let's go have a, let's go have a catch outside. Let's and go have a, course, let's... He's like, yeah, I didn't really want you here. I went out to get milk and I didn't come back for a reason, so sorry. <laughs> he just shoots him. Bang! <laughs> Like, What's... it's right, like, I, I understand, as a story perspective, that had to happen, because, like, clearly he couldn't tell him, but at the same time, he fucking shot you in the chest. Like, I don't know anybody who wants to get willingly shot for any fucking reason at all, oh, yeah. let alone, I wouldn't have forgiven him for that. Like, no. oh, you had no choice. Like, yeah, you had a choice. You had a choice. You could have aimed for, I don't know, my shoulder, where it wouldn't have, I mean, not that I've ever been shot, but... You could have easily winged my arm or my shoulder where it could have been less painful. No, no. he's a arm. hair. He's a hair from your fucking any vital like, org. I think it's like right here is yeah, where like you got his, shot. Yeah, because it was right by where his shirt pocket was or was supposed to be at. So like, like, uh, but even then, like, right there. It's, he still got fucking shot by your patriarch. Like, because these are not meant, to, I mean, they're supposed to be just humans, but like some of the things they survive. It's and the like, shit they go through. Human. Well, a normal what human the wouldn't fuck? survive that. But, like, well... Oh, and this thing that I really wanted to uh, talk to you about is yeah. the acting in this, because... Uh, the voice acting was really impressive. Job. Like, as usually it's either one or the other, like, either the Japanese uh, subbed as well or the dub does really well, but this mm -hmm. was actually a they rare exception both, both really good. Like, um, I think... I have some issues with some of the, the choices, and even you do with the Japanese, but overall, oh, yeah. like, they did a pretty decent job. I mean... I still love the fact that Majima originally was actually Mark Hamill, funny enough. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know who Mark Hamill is, he was the Joker for over 20-some years. So you can actually hear the Joker voice in him. But at the same time, they he never they... He didn't remember even doing it. That's a funny thing. He had asked, like, I don't even remember voicing the character. I just know what happened because my voice is there. So but... so what's funny is there's this one character you pointed out. And I think we fight him, but he, I think... Yeah, he blows up. Um, Ish Ishioda. Ishioda. Yeah, the guy who sounds like uh, Japanese Scarface. Yeah, he's, he's basically Japanese Scarface. And it's funny, because in the Japanese dub, he sounds like he should. Yeah. But with us, who play the English dub, he's like, why do you sound like just a mobster? No wonder there were hardly any Komijuo guards. So, character-wise, they did really well with the actor. They did. They did very well with or the even, voice acting. I'm happy with how it turned out. Oh yeah, that's actually really that impressive. That was that they went impressive. The time to do that. That that's was something they did not have to do. No, but that was impressive in my opinion. Like, well, because they took a lot, or even then, like they reanimated some scenes, mm -hmm. like because some of them, like because I, I also probably I don't know, I don't know the languages as well, but I know Jap Japan is very di or Japanese is very different from English. So like, yeah, the way we say sentences is not the same as they because you didn't even hear it in the dub. 
and they had to re like extend some scenes for that reason. Mm-hmm. It's not really brief, but it's enough. That, like somebody pointed out to me in a, in a Yakuza yeah. YouTuber I watch, and it's really impressive. They went hard with it. Yep, I was actually fighting myself because I originally wanted to give this a seven point five. I wanted to, but I'm like, I think I'm being too critical on that because of this one moment in the game that really fucked with me. Ah, I think I don't even know what this is, but I'm curious what what it's going to be. Uh, it is the brother situation, the locker situation. Oh. That fucked with me. Royally. Now I'm really curious what you think about this, because we talked about it a little bit earlier. Yeah, but we talked about the, how, how I hate this. this. Basically, the situation is, uh, for those who don't know, uh, both um, uh, Ichiban and the young master basically are born the same day. And are put into ver- onto lockers right next to each other. One, because the father's a douchebag. And the other one, because uh, fucking the patriarch, uh, uh, Arakawa, I think. Yeah, Arakawa was the head Arakawa was the pa- head patriarch. Basically, his girlfriend was being hunted by the Yakuza. Because of this, they're both put into lockers number 99... And number 100. I remember those two numbers because of how much I hated it. And like, that's another moment when I said earlier, that's a little too convenient for oh, them right next to each other. Like, I think it was very poetic because really they were born with this. They were basically, they were brothers at the end of it without actually ah. realizing it, but still. I think you really caught convenient. that. Did you catch that hydrate, by the way? Oh, I did. So I saw, um, yeah. Oracle pointed that out. Thank you. So. Thank you. It just it boggles like, it my mind, but it is still really convenient. And like, even the second too... time around, like, good. It, it's far too convenient. I agree. It is way too convenient. At most, he should be. Mid- it's like you were even calling it pretty early because, like, I when I was playing it, I didn't actually see that coming because I didn't like really look at the faces like you were doing, and then you even said oh, like pretty early on, like, "Wow, um, Atakawa looks very similar to Ichiban um, Sawashiro." Oh, you just pointed like he looks more like him than his actual dad, and I thought that was really funny that you pointed out that early. Yeah, because I didn't see that coming at all. Like I, I didn't think anything of it until like it, basically that hit me like a ton of. Uh, well, I that's think a weird example to think of, but still. Well, here's it, the thing. It came out want, of nowhere to me. Here's the thing. I want you to look at right now. The patriarch and Ichiban both are here. If you look at the eyebrows; are quite similar. Yes, the hair is not the same, but the reason why is because they want to make Ichiban look very different from everyone fucking else. Because he's got main character syndrome. Well, and like that's also a testament to how they want to differentiate from Kido. Oh, yeah. Because Kido had a white suit or a gray suit with a red shirt underneath of it. He yeah. Had, he was a traditional Yakuza versus Ichiban is the exact opposite of Kido. Yeah, he's, he's a reverse. He's a nerd. I, I mean, that's kind of the idea with the, the fucked up hair for a reason yep. or the crazy hair for a reason. Red suit versus flamboyant. But when you sleek back blade. Ichiban's hair when you see him early in game, they look really similar. Which yeah. kind of caught me off guard. Same with the facial but, hair. Yeah, they really like even in the very beginning of the game where you're playing as him uh, by yourself, he kind of does look a lot like him. Um, what was another con that you weren't the biggest fan of in your opinion? Or did we go through the con list? So we kind of gone through some of them. Uh, there's actually a few. I and I still do really, and I want to talk more about it. I was so underwhelmed after Majima because, like, that really was the hardest boss was him. Oh yeah. And then Kido, like, because like you even mentioned this, and I still think it's the truth. Like Tendo, they even hype him to be like he was an ex-boxer yeah he's like one he's of the just, toughest out ho, there ho, ho, ho. like i love the fact that ichiban basically had the balls like no i'm gonna go fight this guy like he yep. got punched and he went back 10 feet he's like no oh, yeah. fuck this let's go but and, like and then you really wasn't fight that hard. him <laughs> like like <laughs> like it becomes it became more of an annoyance to me like even it's a when i sponge like first time when I played this the the, uh, the vanilla way, uh, I think I only took two tries because I just miscalculated an attack and he ended up killing me. But I'm like, I was oh, gonna yeah. win this anyways. I don't. Second time, it's not hard to beat him. I think it's I only faced him the one time, like, like the one time, and I'm like, like okay, I gotta strategize to be, like, this. This is meant to be a challenge. What the fuck? Like, I understand that like. Because they don't want to make their legacy characters like that easy to beat, but they also oh, yeah. want to make it harder. But they like, made, but they made them too powerful in my Tendo opinion. Tendo was just, but like even in the brawler mod, like Tendo was not hard to beat. No, Tendo was very easy. Like I he was a damage sponge. Yeah, 
that's because a lot of his attack pattern was he would do his one move where you take out his brass knuckles and almost mm -hmm. one shot you. That's all he had. Yeah, that's all he does. He didn't have that. That's like, he had nothing. He had really had no other card to play. But Plus, speaking of the Tendo fights, yeah. It, after you beat him, it's ah. convenience. Yeah, I was about to say that as well with Mirror Face, because that's so that's, convenient. I thought he died! Well, like, first time I played it, I'm like, oh, that's a great idea. Second time I played it, I'm like, that's so convenient. They have to get Mirror Face right then and there. Yep. He's able to do all that perfectly. Like, again, just it, too many conveniences. It's just, it, it didn't need to be that convenient. What else? Oh, speaking of which, because we have a play now, and it's also accurate. Um, yep. Fucking soundtrack of this game is actually. Really oh good. yeah, like, the soundtrack's so fantastic. I've been having this playing in the background for us. Uh, um, but yeah, but yeah like, the I soundtrack like all is the songs fantastic. Were bangers, like oh, yeah. I, I still think Majima's theme is the absolute best because it just it just it goes so hard. Mm -hmm. Like the music to this game is fantastic, and uh, it uh, this game actually almost makes my top twenty games. What really? Because of the soundtrack. Huh. Interesting. Cause, because I, I only saw your top nine list. I didn't have to see like, your top twenty, but yeah, the only. Uh, but yeah, soundtrack has been fantastic. We've been listening to it as we've been going through here. Uh, no, if you're watching the vod, the vod is probably saying "go fuck yourself" because uh, you guys don't hear it. That being said, go listen to the soundtrack on Spotify or go listen to it on YouTube. It's really good. Some of the mm -hmm. songs, I mean, some of them just go, have nowhere to go that hard. Others, you know, they're a little mad, but. Obviously, like a lot of the battle themes are actually mm -hmm. really consistently good. Uh, like again, I will say Majima was the best because every version of Receive You has just consistently been really uh, good What is? For him. Do we have Majima's theme? That next one actually, but, that was not intentional. That was not intentional. Way too you know what? well. Fuck it. Because like, I remember like this first time I ever fought, when I was fighting him, and I'm like, okay, I got this. It won't be that bad. And this fucking guy. Fucking uses <laughs> Shadow Clone Jutsu against you. I'm like, are Jesus. You serious? Like, why? You motherfucker. Well, like, it's one of these moments. I'm like, when is, like, how is, it, how can anyone do this? Like, because I don't know what's actually happening. Either A, he can actually clone himself like that, or, or B, it's just a hallucination. Just or, so, yeah, or because all of it is his uh, imagination. The, yeah, it's just combat. Ichiban's hallucinations. But what the fuck is he actually seeing then? Because he has to see something. Like, why is he seeing Do you want to know what my moment? thought is? Because you only what? fight three extras. You only fight three extras. It's, it's just oh, guys yeah. who look very similar to him. Uh, I liked Pound Mates, honestly. I did too. And I like um, going through the sub stories to find them too. Which oh, yeah. Nice. Again, let's go with the Diaper Man. <laughs> See, I never actually used him much because his. Oh, I his used him a couple times. And it's fucking I only, hilarious. I used him once, and after that, I only stuck with non buzz ability with his uh, Melodious Stench where you just lower your attack and defense mm. that way. Yeah. But, so, so we finished the companions. Else. We finished the top. Uh, the soundtrack was really well. Oh, but on the companions, I didn't get to finish mentioning. Yes, I do find it really funny that you didn't even bother with Ari at all, and you didn't even know she was a thing. And I like how most of the community, like, because I obviously frequently I frequent the Yakuza mm -hmm. subreddit. Nobody really cared about her. Like, she was actually meant to be somebody. <laughs> I mean, that's just the easy way to sum it up. But she was actually somebody that won a contest for the game and got to be in it, which is why, if you notice, she's not in any of the material at all. She's not in any of the story besides that one mission. She's kind of just there. That's but hilarious. If you, like, if you really didn't go out of your way, you would never really know she exists. Like, my first run of the game, I never used her. I knew she was someone you get to the minigame, but I never realized she was a companion. And then mm -hmm. when I did my Legend run, which I want to talk about later, because you didn't do that, but I did, I actually yeah. had to bring her in, because when you lose Namba in that one mission, or that one little section of the game, you can't do that with just um, you, Adachi, and Psycho against Ishioda, because I just got stomped on. Yeah. So I had to grind that out to bring her in, because if not, you will just lose fights without even hesitating. Okay. Or the Ish Ishioda fight with Namba. You will just fucking lose that because you need because I remember, I know you remember how hard that was. Oh yeah, that was his annoying. gun attack because everyone else was fine. It was just his fucking gun attack always took you out every time. Yep. But let's see the expressions on these characters. They've done so good with them. Like if yeah. I remember correctly, like when someone cried, there was actually red in their eyes. Yeah. So that's actually another thing I forgot to actually bring up, but it's a good good point because, like I mentioned before, like I consider like and. You, Obviously, you can differ if you disagree with me, but I consider, like, Rockstar to be the peak mm. when it comes to graphics and, like, quality of life. Because Red Dead Redemption 2, they did such an amazing job with, like, the anime. I've you can never see played that eating. one. Okay, so, 
I don't think it's a kind of game. That's the thing. Like, it's, it's. I mean, it's. I think if if but, you can really get through the gameplay, the story will actually really get you because it's a very good story. Or, but if so, you look at the but, graphics on their face, like you can just yeah, see the sex. You can see or, like, the, the pain. You like, can see the I agony. Think if Rockstar is up here, I think like Yakuza and RGG and Sekiro are like it's it's getting here. there. Like it, they're it's, well, like right about midway. The yeah, like they're. I, I don't, that's the thing. They don't even try to make the best graphics they can. No. They just kind of turn out and amazing. Like you can like I, funny again with the way the song was put, like, when you see Ichiban just breaking down and, like, he really wants Adekawa oh, yeah. to split, you could just see the sadness and the redness, oh, like, yeah. just such a raw, genuine emotion for a guy um, who was pretty happy the whole time in the entire game. And very so positive. This, so this is kind of a good segue for me about cutscenes. Yeah. Uh, there are two styles of cutscenes that they do in this game, which is the li live action style, which is where everything's still moving, and then they have the comic book style. Yeah, where they have, like, the the text and you have to keep clicking through them to advance it yeah well that's not what i'm talking about i'm talking about like no. uh when oh, like yeah, like this, yeah when yeah i know what you're talking about now yeah like when ichiban was a kid you didn't see yeah. it wasn't the live style it was the comic book style yeah like yeah i remember they that's the thing, they only had those in a couple of the games that's only like in the beginning part of it they have like mm. and they'll kind of sprinkle it in randomly but they don't use them as frequently as i expect them yeah to. I, I was kind of the same way for that so i'm also keeping an eye on the dogs right now you're good so, um, honestly, I kind of wish they didn't do the comic style. Yeah, because they only sprinkle it in really randomly. And very they they randomly really too. do. They, they like at the very beginning, it's used a lot, and I'm like, oh, okay, yeah. I can I can handle this. Like you and said, just never bring it up. Again. And then it's like here, like every yeah. like third chapter at most, they but bring like, it in. But no, I, I really enjoy this. I think it, I'm glad he got into it since he's out here, and I can talk all the shit about Demon that I want to now. Um, I really enjoyed that Demon got into this as much as I did, considering I wanted to replay this because of the Like a Brawler mod, which, if you guys don't already know, Like a Brawler mod was made by one guy over the course of two years. It was his passion project, um, which, again, should not be played like a, a Brawler at all, because it is not a game meant to be played like that. It's You will so see it after playing it for a couple hours of it, let alone when you actually get to some of the bosses, you're like, fuck that, but... I'm glad Demon enjoyed it. I'm glad Demon got into it because I kept really because I kept talking about Yakuza so much. That's kind of how it went to everybody because he especially, Nacho Egg, Wimmy, a couple other people that I know in my community and are and also come to the Demons community as well. They only played this game because I talked about it so fucking much and I played it and I'm like, this is, these are great games. Funny enough, I, I owned it before I talked to you. Right, because that's one of the first things we actually talked about because I think we talked about RPGs and you're like, yeah, I have this. I played a little bit of it, but I don't remember it, so I have to go back and replay it again. Yeah. So, uh, cover all the topics and more. Yep, we talk. We talked about a good chunk of things. Uh, so if you guys are curious, if you guys are wondering where this vod will be, we'll be back on YouTube after I'm done editing this. Um, if you guys are curious, who is with me? This is Caloth of zero uh, four six seven. Yes. Thank you. Oh, my brain always forgets the numbers. It. I mean, if it makes you, it was just a random the number that I picked when I picked the name. Got but it. If I'm. But if you're ever interested, I stream on Twitch as well, obviously. I have a YouTube page, same name, Calif0467. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. Yeah, go Some follow him. Um, go follow him. Go follow this man. Bastard man. Don't ever shout me like that, demon. But uh, you're still a <laughs> bastard man. But yeah. Uh, I've been playing Infinite Wealth. I also play other games like Nightingale. Um, yep. Come check me out.